So every beginning developer goes through the same journey. They start out with basic syntax, and then eventually their applications start becoming more complex and more lines of code, and they need to start separating things into components, classes, methods, whatever structure your language of choice prefers. But how do you split these things appropriately? How do you do it like a professional? And this is where you come across a principle called the Single Responsibility Principle, or SRP for short. And there's a lot of information out there, and it ranges from flat out wrong to very helpful. But as a beginner, you don't know what you don't know. So today, I'd like to dig into the Single Responsibility Principle from the perspective of a beginner. And my goal is to get you started separating things the right way, but we're gonna oversimplify it so as a beginner, you don't get stuck in analysis paralysis because the best way to master something like SRP is to write a lot of code. And this is one of those things that takes years to get comfortable with. Even today, with 20 years of experience, I still have to refactor my code to get it to a place where I like the single responsibilities that my components have. This is normal. You're not gonna get it perfect the first time, but I'm gonna show you how to start thinking about it. I'm Eric Wise from Scale Foundry, where we teach people how to code the right way. So let's start off by talking about why the single responsibility principle is so difficult, even though it's supposed to simplify things. And the reason is right in its definition. Single responsibility principle states that a class or method or component should only have one responsibility and one reason to change. And that's really sensible and it's good advice, but it doesn't define what a responsibility is or how big or small that is. And it doesn't define what a reason is either. So it leaves the community to interpret. So let's do that. Let's interpret. Through the perspective of a beginner, there are only three reasons why you should create a class or code component. The first reason is a data transfer object, or DTO for short. So what is a DTO? It's simply a property bag. It does not have complex behaviors or logic going on. It just contains fields and properties and other data elements that are related to each other. So if we had a DTO like an employee object, it might have things like your employee ID and your name and your title, maybe some salary information. All of this stuff is data that is related to an employee and it should be grouped together. And what the DTOs do in an application is they store that data and allow you to pass it around easily within your application to your code components that use employee data. Like for example, if you had a method that runs payroll, you would want to pass in a collection of employee objects to the payroll. So having all of those data points together neatly contained in an employee object is very useful and it simplifies your method parameters because you don't have to split out all of the different data points into separate parameters. You can pass one single employee object that has all of the data you need. So when you're looking at a spec or an application that you're trying to build, DTOs are often the nouns of your application. So when you see things like employee, invoice, payment method, those are all DTO candidates that you can use. So first way you divide things, the first single responsibility is grouping related data together. That is a DTO. Now, the second reason you might want to create a class or component is to perform one or more related tasks. And that's where that relationship thing comes in. Because even though it says single responsibility principle, it doesn't mean that you can only have one method. As an example, I might have a class that manages the employee data and how it gets saved and loaded from the database. And that class might have methods like get an employee by ID, get all the employees for a department, save or update an employee, create a new employee, delete an employee. 
those tasks are all related to the responsibility of storing and retrieving employee data. So again, when you're looking through your spec, these tasks are going to be the verbs of your application, like processing a payment for a retail application or sending a notification to the warehouse so that the order gets shipped, things like that. They are small, concise, related tasks or actions. So now that we have DTOs that store data and tasks that can do small processes, the third reason why you will create a class or a component is to manage a workflow. And all a workflow is, is managing multiple DTOs and tasks that are related to each other. And one of the best examples of this is a checkout on a retail website. When you hit the checkout button, there are things that need to happen. Your payment needs to be processed. An email receipt needs to be sent to you as the customer. The contents of the order need to be sent to the warehouse so that they'll package things up. It might need to contact a shipping company so that they'll come and pick up your package and it gives them all of your order information and your address. That whole process needs to complete for you to get whatever it is you purchased. So having a class that manages that workflow and handles all of the successes and failures and decides what to do and what order to call things in is the third type of object that you should create in class design. And that is the single responsibility, making sure that the order is processed correctly. And that's really it. That's how I teach beginners to start separating their concerns and moving towards single responsibility principle. As you look through your specification, if there is related data, put it in a DTO. If there is a task to do, put that task as a method in a class. And if there are multiple methods that are closely related to each other, like our example with the database interactions, then put them in the same class. And ultimately, the workflow of your application should be combining multiple tasks and moving the data between those tasks, using those DTOs, shuttling things around. But the key part is the workflows should not be making a lot of decisions. They should be asking tasks to do things and only controlling the flow of the application. And if you approach your architecture that way early on as a developer, your code will start to separate its concerns. It will be easier for you to maintain and make changes to it. And it will give you a foundation upon which you can build and start getting a little more formal and professional later on. But early on, keep it simple. Think about those three use cases, separate things in those three use cases, and you will avoid a lot of analysis paralysis and a lot of pain. Now, if this is something you want more practice with, head on over to skillfoundry.io. Sign up for one of our low-cost subscriptions. You will be able to walk through the process of taking projects from everything being in program main to separating into classes and components, and then evolving those components to do things like dependency injection and unit testing the way that professionals do. We deliberately set up our hands-on exercises to start like a beginner and then refactor to what a professional would do so that each step of the way you can compare and contrast the evolution from novice to professional. I hope to see you over there. Until next time, I'm Eric Wise from Skill Foundry. Happy coding.